Number three. So we are looking at three functions, trigonometric functions. The first we are picking is sine, sine f of x. What did I pronounce first? Sine. I pronounced sine, and then next I pronounced f of x. Like I told you, in all of the functions we are going to treat, f of x will be our minor. The middle there, which is what I pronounced first, is sine. The y the x will be, we will differentiate our minor. Are you getting me? The minor can be anything for now, we don't know. We'll be waiting for the examiner to print whatever the minor is. Are you getting me right? So we're going to write d dx, differentiate with respect to x, whatever the minor function is. Then times proceed and differentiate the major. Are you there? The major is what? Good. If you differentiate sine, it's going to give you cos. If anybody asks you, uh uh how, -huh, tell the person it's not your business. If the person wants to know why, the person should go to first principle. Remember that formula I derived, are you getting me? The person should go to first principle number one. And again, go to trigonometric identity. Engineering students, you need trig identity. All those identities, you need them to be able to prove that if you differentiate sign, it will change to what cause. It has a proof, are you getting me right? In the GMAS 41 city channel, you have those stuffs there. But I say you don't need them. If you need them, there is no way I wouldn't take my time to derive each of them one after the other and crystal clear. But you don't need them. You'll see that in the lecture halls. But when you're being taught this, you wouldn't need them. Are you getting me right? So, if you differentiate the major, which is sine, it changes to what? And then remember to write in front of it the original minor function, just like you did for exponential. Are you getting me right? Quick example. Y is equal to sine x. This is the standard we use in teaching you. And which, like I said, only gives you 30% knowledge. Are you getting me right? There are a lot of information that is in here. Why did I say there are a lot of information hidden here? With this standard, they don't usually tell us that you have to differentiate the minor. Are you getting me right? And the reason is this. In this case, the minor is what? X. x. If you differentiate x, you're going to get what? X. 1. If you use that 1 to multiply the standard derivative of the major, it will still give you the standard derivative of that word major. The same thing. So, no change. Am I communicating right? And because there's no change in that case, like if I tell you, okay, differentiate sign x now, the answer will simply be what? Cos x. So something is hidden. Am I complicating? Because a student who does not have any idea of differentiation now, if you are giving that person the standard that if you differentiate sine x, you will get what? Cos x. If you give that student sine 2x to differentiate, the student will tell you the answer is what? Cos 2x. Yes. I'm speaking based on what I suffered during my time. I didn't do calculus from my whole level. And so I am not talking out of sense. I am saying what happens real. Are you getting me right? Except if the student have an idea of further minus all this differentiation, that is when the student will know that if you're giving sine 2x to differentiate, the answer is not what? Cos 2x. But the major minor explains all these things. Are you getting me right? Let's be chief fast one. I'm giving you the standard. This is the question. The y dx will now be equal to differentiate the minor, which is x. You get what? You get what? 1 times differentiate the major, which is sine. If you differentiate sine, you get what? Cos what? Cos x. Cos of the original minor function. Multiply this. You have done with the y dx. This is the calculus. Are you getting me? Any other thing you do from here is normal simplification. So dy dx here is simply equal to what? Cos x, because you are multiplying it by 1. Let's look at this question. Sine x squared. Sine x squared. Dy dx. Another example here. What is the minor function here? Good. If you differentiate x squared, what will you get? 2x. Is that also? 2x. Good. You now go to the major and differentiate. The major is sine, right? If you differentiate sine, you get what? Cos. You leave it like this? No. Remember to fix the original minor function, x squared. Are you getting me right? And from this. Okay, let's take this one last. Y equal to sine 5x. What is the, the 
make a minor function here. If you differentiate 5x, what would you get? 5. Because you only differentiate the x there, is that not so? Which will give you 1. 1 times a 5 will give you what? 5. Am I complicating? So the derivative of 5x, which is the minor, the y dx, will give you what? 5. Then you proceed and differentiate the major. If you differentiate sine, you get what? By the effort, if you differentiate sine, we say it will give you cos. Has it ever changed for any of these three questions we solved? So you see that it is one directional, two of us. Differentiate sine, you get what? Cos. So you have known that thing and you have known it forever. Okay, so having to take cos, do you leave it like this? Remember to fix the original minor function in front of you, which is 5x. Let us move on to standard derivative of cos. We are done with that of sum. But if you have questions on this, you can ask before we move on to that of sum. Let me wipe this part of the board. Dear students, you have known what I know. What did I say? You have known what I know. So I am going to speed up now. The only thing you now need is to wait for me to tell you the standard derivative of the major functions. Are you getting me right? The way you solve problems for each of them is the same pattern. M minor, major, or major, minor. Are you getting me right? This takes us to B. Y equal to cos f of x. Your dy dx will give you differentiate the minor times now standard derivative of the major cos. If you differentiate cos, it will change to minus sine. So you are expected to memorize that. Are you getting me right? Differentiate the major function now, you get minus sine. Remember to write in front of it the original minor function. I did tell you right. Now look at this on the third place. If you multiply the derivative of this minor function, if you multiply the derivative of this minor function with this guy, will the minus not come behind? It will come behind, is that not so? It's just like somebody giving you 2 times minus 3. If you multiply this, you get what? Okay, let's say minus 3x, you get what? Minus 6x. So the negative will always come behind. Don't forget that. Which means I can write the derivative of this guy as minus the f of x dx sine what? Sine f of x. Let's look at an example of dg. y is equal to cos 2x. Then dy dx is equal to, what is the minor here? If you differentiate 2x, what will you get? 2. Then if you differentiate the major cos, what would you get? Minus sine. So it's going to be times minus sine. Sine what? Sine 2x. If you simplify this 2 times this guy, it's going to give you minus 2 sine what? Sine 2x. Is that clear? Good. Yeah. Let's look at another example. So y is equal to, I want to give you this guy. And this guy is not all that funny, but I would like us to do it. I will guide you. Cos square. Okay. Cos square x. Cos square x. Let's see how we differentiate this one. Are we together? Divide the x. You would think that it is difficult. It is not. Why not wait for us to do it? Then you find out that it is very simple. Are we ready for the derivative of this guy? Are we ready? First of all, please take notes. You have cos square x. You know that is the way we read this guy. Okay, cos square x or square cos x. The correct way is actually square what? Cos x. Remember I told you you pronounce the power first, isn't it? So cos square x or square cos x is rewritten as cos x. Everything in brackets, all what? Square. As a quick reminder, 
Do you still remember the formula of maximum height under projectile in physics? Yes. Maximum height is given as squared u sine squared theta all over 2g. That part of sine squared theta, if you remember, you will be told that you want to solve this thing. First of all, find the value of sine theta. Is that not so? Anything you get, you cannot do what? Square root. That's the correct interpretation. So, cos squared theta is written as cos x all over. Cos squared x is written as cos x all in brackets. Everything raised to the power what? 2. On the normal, you are meant to solve this and then square whatever you get. I hope that is clear, right? Now, let me ask you, please, calm down. I'd like us to follow this thing gradually. Don't write. Let's watch and see what happens. Because x always to power 2. Do you think that this guy, this function, has something that related this to function number 1 we created today? You know, function number 1 is powers of a variable. Is that not so? And how do you identify powers of a variable I told you? Is it not that you have something, a function, and it will carry power, a number, a real number? Is that not so? That is why I used f of x in that case, raised to the power what? n. And we say that that f of x can be anything. Do you remember that, right? Yes. So, do you agree with me that this cos x, all in bracket raised to the power 2, has a relationship with powers of the variable? Do you agree? Watch it. This cos x is our f of x now. Are you getting me right? And this power is our what? n. Am I complicating, friends? So this guy you are seeing here is a type of function that has powers of a variable plus trigonometry function in it. So in differentiating this, you use both the idea of what? Powers of a variable to differentiate. Are you getting me right? You will also use the idea of what? Trigonometry to differentiate. Are you ready? The first thing you do is to start differentiating from that powers of a variable. Does that make sense? And the power here is what? 2. So we go. This thing we say that is the same as cos x all raised to the power what? 2. So differentiating following powers of the variable, which is the power 2. Remember the rule. Use the power, multiply the base, go and minus 1 from the power. I think that's the rule, right? Can we do that? 2 times cos x. If you go to the power 2 minus 1, will give you what? And cos x is power 1, will still give you what? Cos x. We have differentiated the major. Remember in this case, the major is the power. Is that also? That's what we learned from powers of a variable. Are we together? But you have not finished because what we differentiated there is the major. Are you getting me? We have to now differentiate the what? Minus of cos x times if you differentiate cos x, what would you get to say? Minus sine x. So this is going to be times minus sine x. You have done the differentiation. So that is the rule. Differentiate from the power first. Because this guy is expressed in powers of the variable. Are you telling me right? When you are done with that, go to the minor function, which is the base, differentiate the base. Is the explanation clear? Is it clear? Okay. So here you can now simplify. You divide the x is now 2 times cos x times minus sin x. The same as minus 2 sin x cos x. We usually write sin before cos. But if you want to write cos before sin, it doesn't matter. Are you getting me right? Good. Interesting. If you have a question, you can ask this. Yes. Why is it that x is not carrying what? Squared. Why is it not carrying this squared? This squared. Thank you. The reason is because the only thing you differentiated was what? Cos x. Is that not so? That's the only Is cos x not the minor function? Good. Do you understand that, right? Further question. Don't worry, as we move on, technically, I'll be introducing it in this type of. You know, 
powers of that guy. Are you getting me right? You have a different function, and that different function now is written as powers of a variable. So you get used to them. We'll be moving on to the next function, time. C. Y equal to tan f of x. The y dx of this guy is going to be equal to differentiate with respect to x whatever the minor function is. Then multiply by the derivative of the major function. Is that not so? What is the major function in this guy? What is the major function? Tan. If you differentiate tan, you will get square sec. You will get what? Square sec. That's the standard. But do you leave it like that? Square set, leave it like that. Remember to always write in front the original minor function. Example. Y equal to tan 3x. Tan 3x. Dy dx will be equal to. What do you do first? Identify your minor. You see, I am teaching you this day today and I keep identifying my minor and my major. True or false? I am the tutor teaching you and this is what I am doing. What stops you in the exam or once you see a question to identify your minor and identify your what? Major. Once you do that, you don't have any problems. Are you getting me right? But if you are negligent of the concept that you need to know your minor, you need to know your major, you might start having challenges. Are you getting me wrong? I give you because oh, this is minor, this is major. Okay, what's the minor? It's such a type of function. Differentiate it. Are you getting me? What's the major? Oh, the major is this function. You remember the standard. Are you getting me? So we move on. The minor here is what? I can't tell you. If you differentiate 3x, what will you get? 3. Because in that case, you are differentiating only x. Is that also? If you differentiate only x, you get 1. 1 times 3 will give you what? 3. I will take the derivative of the minor. I will now move on and differentiate the major. If you differentiate tan, what will you get? You said square set. Don't forget to write in front of it the original minor function. Anyone that knows chain rule very well, let you be equal to. <laughs> let you be equal to. Take your time and be doing let you be equal to. Are you getting me? Before you finish one let you be equal to, we are done with up to like three questions. Are you following me? Now, you are going to let, let you be equal to, when we get to chain rule, like you get me right, I will teach it. But I will only teach it for formality, like let it be that, yes, during your years in school, you learned it, are you getting me right? Not for the exam you are going for, because you don't need it. In fact, every year I had taught that, anytime I show them the major minor, and I show them chain rule, ah, you hear the students say, no, 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 we don't want chain rule anymore. You will join, you will join the choir to shout that when I treat chain rule. Because if I treat chain rule, I usually compare that chain rule with major minor. I will solve the question using chain rule. And solve the same question using what? Major minor. And you will say what you will say yourself. Y is equal to, let's say we have tan Q X. Tan Q what? X. You know the interpretation of this? Q tan x. That is the tan x, everything raised to power what? 3. So have that in your brain now because I'm not going to write it anywhere. Tan x, everything raised to power what? 3. So you know there is powers of a variable there, 2 or false. And that power 3 will be our major. Am I correct? Why the tan x will not be our what? Minor. So we're going to start differentiating from the major of that power. Remember standard rule 1 for power rule. I get me. Do you have tan x all in bracket raised to power 3 now in your brain? Are you ready? So differentiate using that power, power 3. You are going to use that 3 to multiply the base tan x, is that not so? You know, if you use the power to multiply the base, the rule say go to the power of minus 1. This is power 3 already, so if you use the 3 to multiply the base, you go to that power 3 and minus 1, so you get power what? Power 2. You are done with the first differentiation, the major, where you started with the power. Are you there? 
You will now go to the minor and differentiate. Are you following? Times the minor is this tan x, tan x alone. Are you getting me right? If you differentiate tan x, what will you get? Square sec x. Is that not so? Tan x alone, tan x alone, the minor here is x. True or false? If you differentiate x alone, you get 1. And I told you in that case, you don't need to bother yourself. True or false? So if you differentiate that tan x alone, you get what? Square sec x. So multiply out this line. The answer that gives you 3 sec square x. Then you come to this tan x. Are you getting me right? This square is affecting tan x. So tan x, everything is to 2. And it is the same as tan square x. So that is the work the answer of this guy. Okay, let us move on to our next function under 3, D. You are giving y to be equal to sec f of x. If you differentiate sec f of x, the y the x is going to be equal to differentiate the minor function with respect to x. So, differentiate the minor function with respect to x, then times standard derivative of this major function sec. Standard derivative of major function sec is, are you ready? Sec tan. Is what I said. Sec tan. That is sec times what? Tan. The only thing is that the sec will carry the original minor function f of x. Are you getting me? And the tan will also carry what? The original function, the original minor function f of x. What I usually advise students to do in order to help them. You know this thing, eh? Differentiate sec. You get sec x tan x. Forget all those minor function pronunciation. Are you getting me right? First of all, know the major function you are going to get when you differentiate. For example, when we had exponential f of x, I said if you differentiate exponential, you will still get what? Exponential. Did I bother to go and say f of whatever? You know already that the minor function must follow. Is that not so? Uh -huh. it's, it's, it's something you already know. So, so if you differentiate this sec, what you are going to get is what? Sec tan. Each of them will then carry the original minor. So this is going to be sec f of x tan what? f of x. Sec f of x times tan f of x. As an example, eg, you are giving y to be equal to sec 6x squared. Let me make it sec 6x. We say the minor function can be anything. Is that not so? So what is the minor function in this case? Once again, 6x squared. If you differentiate 6x squared, what would you get? 12x. Is that not so? 12 what? X. Do we all agree? Okay. 12x. Then differentiate the major. That is why you must memorize the derivative of the major. Because you are not doing any special thing there. Are you getting me right? You just to copy and what? Paste. In the exam hall before then, you already know if you differentiate the major sec, you will get sec tan. Is that not so? Yet the sec and the tan will carry the respective what? Minor function. So this is going to be sec 6x squared times tan 6x squared. That is the answer. This will take us to another function. Cut.